My people, my people, my people, what is going on? It's the Wealthy Guy here. I'm live tonight on Instagram and on Facebook. And tonight I'm talking about her. So I'm gonna give people a minute to join, see who's checking it out tonight, and then get into the topic. So tonight's topic is actually going to be really cool because I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite furs. Okay, okay, I see people, I see people. What's going on, Christopher, Jesse, Paul, Lawrence, Sean, Jermaine, Artis? What's going on? Let's see who's on Instagram. Freddie, Lannister, Eugene. How you doing? Alejandro, Anthony. What is going on? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So I want to kick off the new year, right, talking about one of my favorite subjects, um, which is Fur. And what I'll do before actually showing first uh, is talk about how I came up with the concept of my wealthy top coat. So before I started doing this, I worked in finance for um, a number of years and I always had to dress up for work. Um, I was known for wearing suits and I wanted a coat that was really uh, luxurious and rich looking that went well over a suit. Um, and something with real fur. Um, and for two years, I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. Um, and I was walking down Fifth Avenue here in New York one day, and they always have these like fur sales, right? Like 50 to 60% off. Um, and I went into the place, I was like, oh, let me see if they have the type of coat that I'm looking for. So I went in and you know looked around. Of course, they didn't have the coat that I was looking for. Um, and I talked to the salesperson, and the salesperson was just like, you know, you can you can just make it yes, yourself. Um, and <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, you can just make it yourself. People are are, are writing stuff in the chat. This is. You know, I like to laugh, so um, you can make it yourself. So he gave me the he gave me uh, the address of a furrier here in New York, and um, I went down there and I took a coat, an existing coat that I had, um, and I went to that place and I talked to them, and there was actually a guy in there who said, you know what, you should really go around the corner to this other place, you get a better deal. And I did, and I went there and I got uh, fur collars put on two coats. Um, and then I started to wear them um, and people started asking about them. And then I started to make them for people. And then eventually it turned into custom made uh, coats. And, and I actually go down and pick every fur myself uh to put on the coats for for the client who else who else is on let me see paul malik hey paul malik gregory courtney david james tap boy lucky james james a uh, fashion man joshua hey joshua alma one classic man ab lima dre cox yeah mike you know these, I always say this every time, these Instagram names, they, they, <laughs> they're not that easy. So so I've been doing my top coats for two years now and, and doing them for two years, of course, I have to do research. I have to know what I'm talking about. I had to find a manufacturer. Um, I had to learn how to measure people. I had to learn about different furs. So tonight I'm gonna be talking about some of the most common ones that I use on my coats. Um, and what's a good fur, what's not a good fur, um, and also, you know, how to take care of, of your, your fur. Um, so let's get right into it. So most of the coats that I, that I use are, uh, the, the collars of fox fur. Um, I love fox fur, uh, silver fox, crystal fox, uh, red fox, to me, just just all awesome but i also use coyote um and tonight i'm also going to show you a uh raccoon i don't use raccoon often but if someone came to me and asked for you know a raccoon collar i could make it for them uh and then also mink Ooh, mink is the best um but not the most expensive fur all right so let's get right into it so 
I'm gonna start here, like with my process. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Hold on, let me put it on my shoulder for y'all. Look at this. So this is a fox that is dyed in olive green. And I've actually just purchased the pelt. Um, last year, I wanna say, when I saw it, I was like, the color is amazing. I have to do something with this. Um, but I've not decided what to do with it yet um, because I want to make a coat for me, but I want the fur to be, I want the coat to be awesome and I want this green fur on it to, to look awesome. So when I make coats for people, I actually go and pick out the pelt and it looks like this. Uh, it has the head on it. It has the feet on it. Um, this is the underbelly. Oh. Um, and you know, a lot of times I'll not know what I want to do with the, the fur yet, like what type of coat I want to, you know, put it on what color. So I'll just keep them and, and hold it. But this has been one that I had. And when I show it to clients, when they like come here, people want it, but they don't want to, you know, because it is such a unique color and it's difficult to replicate this, right? So when they dye fur, they dye it in batches. So they dye a lot of them. So you wouldn't be able to go and just say, could you dye? You could say, could you dye one? But it would be really, really expensive to actually dye one pelt. Um, so a lot of times I find, you know, the last one of, you know, uh, uh, a group of, of pelts that that were dyed and it's a unique color and, and I keep it. Another one that I did that with is this one. So people have seen this particular one um, on my Instagram and people love this particular um, color. This is a, a, a gray, like a charcoal gray. It is, it's in person, it is really, really, really beautiful. Um, and this this collar is actually a detachable collar. So tonight I'll be showing you some you know detachable collars. So this one actually comes off of the jacket. Um, so the collar is attached with loops um, on the actual collar piece, and then buttons on the actual coat. Can you see that? And that's how you keep it in place. So. Daytime, nighttime. Daytime, nighttime. Um, and when I first started making the coats, I would make them all with detachable um, collars. But now, you know, unless the client requests it, they're all attached collars. And this is so, you know, as I was mentioning with the green, when I find unique uh, pelts, I will keep them for myself and make a coat for myself. And this is the leftover piece of the gray one. But look at that. Really, really soft, really beautiful. It just blows really, really nicely in, in the wind. Um, on to another one of my favorites, uh, which is Crystal Fox. Um, Crystal Fox to me is so beautiful. It's browns and there's grays and there's black in there and they just all just go together really well. So the other day, you know, I posted an image with this particular code on advertising my 20 yes yeah, so my coats are 20 percent off right now until friday so if you uh if you love my coat and you want to get it at a discounted price because after that it's going back to the regular price um it's in my etsy shop this particular one when i saw this particular pelt this crystal fox the hair is a little longer than the average crystal fox. And I just thought that it was really, really beautiful. So I kept it for myself. And this one I consider more so of an oversized collar. So people are like, I don't see the, you know, I don't see the coat that you have on in the picture on your site. 
Right, because the standard coats that I make, the collar is a little more, uh, it's about four inches, whereas this one is, um, I want to say about five or, or, or six across here. Um, now, let me just show you for comparison, this is also Crystal Fox, right? So look, look at the difference versus this one, right? But most crystal foxes are going to look like this. Still very beautiful, still very beautiful. But as you can see, the hair is shorter, but all the, all of those tones are there, the gray, the brown, um, this like beige color, and it just all goes really well. And I usually pair it with um, a charcoal coat or a dark colored coat but this one when i saw this particular pelt i knew that i had to have it for myself um and so that's why you don't see this one on there it's a one of a kind i can find you one of a kind uh fur pelts you just have to let me know um what you want but if not then it will be most likely in the standard um uh, standard size the other one of my favorites is the silver fox again another longer haired fox um the silver fox was worn by kings and queens um and royalty and it's considered you know one of the most luxurious um furs i love the crystal fox uh the silver fox because the silver fox it just when that wind blows and you like walk in with your coat, it you just look like money. You really look really good. And and I absolutely love Crystal Fox. But let I mean Silver Fox, but let me just show you. Again, this is a removable collar. So the coat is under there. Let's see it. This one comes off. Now, quick story. So when I first started my business, I uh, was trying to make my coat really affordable for people, affordable luxury. That's all I kept saying. I really want the average person to just be able to buy my coat and feel really good about themselves and feel really wealthy and feel really rich. And my price point, you know, my initial price point was $500. But pretty soon I realized <laughs> that I wouldn't make any money at that, at that price point. So... Uh, what I did was I said, um, let me figure out a way to reduce the cost of, of it. And, and one of the, the thoughts that I had was to get a cheaper fur, right? So a fur from uh, directly from China. So I went on eBay and I bought all of these fur collars from China. And when they arrived, it wasn't good. It really wasn't good. You can tell the difference um, in 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 the quality of them. This one is actually decent. This silver fox is actually decent, um, but most of them are just just not not right. So I'm gonna show you a couple that I would consider not right, and I wouldn't put one of them on a coat for you know one of my clients. So I have a couple here. So I paid like, I want to say 20, 20 to 30 bucks for, for each of them. And when they came, it was just like, mm -mm, there's no way I would feel um, I'm getting, see, and, and they're like shedding. There's no way that I would feel comfortable selling something like this to people. Um, so this one is white. And it has the loops. You probably can't see it because it's white. I'll show you with a different color. But this is uh, fox um, dyed white, right? And to me, the the width of this is more so for a woman, right? A, a man could probably wear it, but I think that it would look better on, on a woman. By the end of this live, I'm going to have all types of fur on me. Um, then this one is a black fox, all right? So this one again, right? You you know you get a tailor to sew the buttons onto your coat. 
and the loops are already on it. So that's the that's the the benefit of something like this is that it's really like a plug and play, right? You get it in the mail, you go to you know your tailor, tell them to put some buttons inside um, the coat in the places to hook it, and boom, you have like an instant collar. But the fur is just it's just not right. Um, this is what it should look like, right? Like, look how much more plush and, and, and sheened this is. This is this is a strong, a strong fox. This is strong um, versus, you know, this, this look flimsy, you know? So I couldn't in right, right conscience um, sell this to people. But I have about, uh, I want to say about 10 of of these. So if y'all want some uh some of these cheap furs, DM me. Uh you have an idea for it or something like that, DM me. Not for a giveaway. I give it to you for a low 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 price. Um but yes, I've never used these because I just didn't feel comfortable um putting these on coats for my clients. This is actually raccoon. This is a cheap raccoon, though. Um, the most beautiful raccoon is the fin raccoon. Um, this one here is 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 is, is a struggle raccoon. So <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't put this on um, anyone's coat either. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah, when I got this in the mail, I was just like, mm -mm, this is, I could not, I could not sell this to people. Um, so it's just been sitting in in, in my place um, for all this time. Uh, next bird I'll talk about really quickly is the red fox. So this is a red fox that I have. And to me, it's not even the best, best one, but it's like one of the first ones that, that I got. And it is. So red fox can be big, but most are small. So a lot of times it will take two red foxes to make a, a collar. The ones that I really like are ones that have some white in it. And usually the white will be really silky and, and, and sheened. Um, and then this one, again, um, like my other coat, this one is one that I would consider an oversized. As you can see, you can't really even see my shoulders um, in it. Um, but the standard coats that I make don't come with one this wide. Like I said, they come with it around four inches just so that it just, I, I always wanted my coat to look really classy and really chic and not so gaudy, right? Because fur already is just like, boom, look at me, right? Um, so I tried to, in, in designing my coat, I tried to kind of stay away from the, the, the gaudiness. Um, but for myself and, you know, me walking around, I'm like a walking advertisement for my business. So I always kind of, the ones for myself, I, I make them bigger. Um, and this is one that I, uh, that I purchased to have, you know, put on a coat. Um, and it actually, you know, came came like this um, from, from the furrier. But this one is nice. Red Fox is beautiful to me. It's, it's really soft. Um, and when you see, I wish I had a pelt because you see the pelt, you'd be like, ooh, that's really nice. And also too, if I had the pelt, you would see how small of a fox um, it, it really is. Okay, so let's see what else. What else? Um, mink. So mink is the most expensive coat that I sell. Um, it's eleven ninety five. It's the Francis. Um, the coat is wool cashmere, and then the collar is mink. Mink again is another short haired um, animal. And minks are, are really small as well. So it takes around three minks to actually make a collar. So the coat has to be more expensive. So before I started doing this, I would always say to myself, why are fur coats $5,000, $10,000? Like why are fur coats so expensive? But once I started doing this, I realized that 
it takes a lot of mix to actually make a coat. Um, so this this tuxedo I I got made for myself um, with this mink collar. I want to say this is one two two minks um, on this particular uh, tuxedo blazer. But if it were um, if it were one of my coats, the way the Francis is cut, it's cut very deep. So it actually requires around three three minks to make the 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 collar. But mink luxurious. Mink is awesome. Mink is awesome in different colors. Um, eventually, I'll make myself a coat with a mink collar with a different color. But you can have it in pink. You can have it in blue. You can have it in green. You can have it in yellow. You can have it in whatever color you could possibly like imagine and that's what's really cool um about it and the same for the uh, for for some of the other ones like you know again mostly i use fox um and you know you can dye fox so many different colors and it just looks amazing um when it's dyed like red and purple, like a couple of weeks ago, I went to the furrier and um, and you know there there was a purple one, and I was like, oh man, this is this is amazing. Um, so I just love like seeing the pelts and feeling them, and and just it it, I, it, it really makes me happy. It really makes me happy. Um, what time is it? Eight twenty two. So last thing. Uh, so before I got on the live, I was like actually doing doing a little bit of research because there is a debate of fashion industry is is moving toward faux fur a lot. A lot of a lot of designers are making their products with faux fur, um, but there's nothing like real fur, right? This is actually some faux fur that I got for a photography project that I was working on. And it was like $9.99 a yard. And I want to say this is about two yards, but this is a polymeric uh, fiber um, that is made to look like fur. I actually just used this in uh, one of my photographs as a rug. Um, so <laughs> that kind of lets you know what I think about faux fur. But yes, it's just not, in my opinion, it's just not not the same. Um, and I was reading, you know, you can Google, you know, real fur versus faux fur. Um, and there's a lot of back and forth about which one is worse. All right, in terms of the environment, right? Because this is a man-made material versus, you know, this, which is is natural. Um, but both go through a process, obviously, to be able to be put on um, coal. All right, so let's see, let's see. That was a lot, that was a lot. Let's see what people are saying. Robert, you the man, can I have your autograph? I I feel like that's David. David, you don't need my autograph. Um, let's see. Time to take notes. I hope you have been, but you know, of course, you can reach out to me. Otter fur. I've not used otter fur, and I not used beaver. I try to stick to mink or fox or coyote. Is there a specific occasion for oversized collar? The Legion, that's a good question. That's a really good question. I think that the oversized collar is appropriate for when you want to really be seen. You know, like it is to me, um, you know, hip hop artists will get the oversized collar. People who really want to be um, a little more flashy, I would say. Um, with the oversized collar, but I love the oversized collar, but the rest of my look is always refined. So it's not a whole loud outfit, right? Like the collar is just the boom surprise in your face while everything else is kind of like refined. <laughs> hey, Tristan. 
Okay, let me see. Let me go. Facebook, let me see what y'all talking about. <laughs> Use that for the house decorations. Right, right. So I don't know if you saw a recent post. I showed a couple of my clients and one was a woman. Yeah, so women uh, have been on my case for a long time saying, when am I gonna do a woman's coat? Um, and I'm like, can the guy, can we, can we have something? Can we really have something? The women have everything, they have so much. But, but, 2019, you will definitely see more women in, in the wealthy um, top coats. Because again, right, my coat is custom, so it's made to fit who's who's average body, right? So it can be made for a, a woman's body. Um, Woohoo, Shay is waiting. All right, all right, Tristan. Um, last thing, so care for fur. You don't want Fur, it's fur, right? These animals come from cold places. You don't want to put it in a warm place. One, do not put your fur in a plastic garment bag and put it in a closet. It needs to breathe, right? If it doesn't breathe, the leather will, the hide will get dry and cracked. This will be dull. It will not look good. You want you want your investment, right? Because this is an investment. You want your investment to last years and years and years. And you want to be able to pass your fur down to your children and their children's children. Because that's how people do it. If you if you do not put your fur right in cold storage, right, with a professional furrier. Best thing for you to do, because I don't, right? So the best thing for you to do is make sure that it is in a cool place, cool, dry place in your home. Don't put it in a cedar chest because the oils will mess it up. Um, make sure it's in a cool, dry place. Optimal temperature and humidity is 45 degrees Fahrenheit, 50% humidity. Um, if, your, if your fur gets wet, right? Just put it out, let it dry. Don't comb it, right? Like as it, as it dries, just kind of pat it back into shape, but don't, don't take a, a, a comb or a brush and, and, and actually um, brush the fur. Um, what else? So if you do have, so sometimes I try not to use this too much, but this is a slicker brush. You know, I actually have one. Uh, I got actually I got this with the they sent this as a free gift with the Chinese furs, but this can easily be bought at Petco or PetSmart or something. And you know, just get it going nice. But I try my best not to really put this on, um, you know, on, on it just in case. You know, I I just don't, but. But yeah, you you have to, you know, make sure that you keep your, you know, your collar, your coat in a cool, uh, dry place. Um, do not put it in plastic. Fur needs to breathe. Um, do not, you know, put on your, your fur coat or your fur collar and then spray cologne or perfume on it. It's not good for for the fur, and it'll the, you know the smell will stay in there. Um, let me see what else, what else, what else. Let me just check really quickly to see if I have any other tips for you in terms of taking care of your fur. Right. Yep. So put it in the cotton cotton um, garment bag, right? So not, not plastic, um, you know, avoid like hairspray, um, you know, put a scarf on so that the, the oils, you know, you put all that cocoa butter or that coconut oil or whatever moisturizer you put on your skin, put on a scarf so that it doesn't get all on, on, on the fur. Um, it is, you know, well, one is 8.30, so the live is, on, is almost over. Steam fur. 
you're not supposed to really put heat on it, but I do steam fur sometimes just to wake it up just a little bit, but I don't put the steamer right on it. I'll hold it back some and just let the, you know, the, the, a little bit of mist get on, uh, get on it. Um, but I love fur. I love fur collars. Um, as I showed you some of these fur collars, right, you can get a collar made. Um, I can help you with that. So DM me if you want to put a collar on one of your existing coats, right? Some people don't want the full, full wealthy top coat. They just want the collar. They have a really cool coat already and they just want the collar. So you send me the coat. I pick out the pelt, get them buttons on the coat, those loops on this, and you got two coats in, in, in one. Um, so a lot of a lot of clients will opt just for the collar piece. But the beauty of the wealthy top coat is that the full product is is for you and it's based off of your body size. You know like your body, it's going to fit your body and when things fit people people can't mess with you. People can mess with you. Like when you when your your clothes fit correctly, you look good. You look rich. You every time a client puts their coat on, they say the same exact thing. I feel rich, even if they are rich. All right, I feel rich. I feel wealthy, and that's where wealthy you know wealthy top coats came from because that's what I wanted the clients to feel feel like. I want people to feel good about themselves. What with my products. Um, so let's see, let's see. Do you have a single photo package add-on for coat buyers? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question, right? So you buy it, buy, buy a, well, if, if you're in New York, you buy a coat for me, I will take a professional picture of you in the coat. Um, some people don't know that I actually do photography, right? I have, uh, my business is called Wealthy Images, W-E-L-T-H-E-I-M-A-G-E-S, but I am a professional photographer. Um, actually, today in my story, some magazine work that I did is is uh, in there. So take a look at my story and you'll see like the wealthy guy as a photographer, you know, in, in a fashion magazine. Um, how are your coats so cheap if you use real animal? Okay, so 1999 to 2009, if you think my coats are cheap, I better see a DM for you from you buying a few of them. Um, my coats are, are actually, uh, I would say, affordable luxury. Like I said, there's some people who ask for the price of my coat and they're like, ooh, but $7.95 to $11.95 for a custom item is amazing. You know, the reason why I decided to make the coat myself was because you go to Fendi, the same thing, same, same thing. This will be $5,000, $5,000, you know? Like, so my coat being, you know, $9.95 or $8.95 or $7.95 or $11.95, that is a great price for something that you will have for years, um, and, and that you can, yeah, you have it for years, and you can wear it, and you will always get compliments on every day. Somebody, brother, that's a nice coat there, brother. That's a nice coat there. Every every day. So um, it's it's reasonable to be priced. But 1999 to 2009, I want to see a DM from you with your order. Um, but yes. It's affordable luxury. Um, I've gotten the process down to where I can still make money and still give people a you know high quality product. Um, but I don't know how long that's gonna be. The more, the more famous I get, that price might have to go up. So y'all better get y'all coats now. <laughs> All right, but I want to say that, so. But but thank you for your question. Um, 1999 to 2009. Happy New Year again. And thank you for rocking with me in 2019, right from the beginning. Like, it's been really, really great. And I am just so humbled by you and all the people that have been supporting me and have been encouraging me and who have 
bought things from me. Um, it's, it's, it's been great. And just look out for many more things from the wealthy guy this year. I'm not even going to say the line that I was saying last year, which is, well, actually, no, I'm going to say it one time. I have a lot of things going on that I can't talk about yet. But when I, when I can talk about them, they will, you know, I'll, 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 I'll talk about them. Um, but thank you. I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate your support. Tell a friend, tell a friend. If you didn't sign up for Ebates, send me a DM so that I can get you $10 cash back. Um, give me your email address. Um, a lot of, a couple of people signed, like gave me their email address and they've not actually signed up. Like, don't forget to sign up. You leaving money on the table. You are leaving money on the table. As I mentioned, my Ebates account, I have gotten $1,300 cash back from shopping online over the past four years. So that is what? About $300 cash, right? Cash back in my PayPal account, or if you want to check, um, that I can use for something else just from shopping online. So don't be silly, right? Like sign up for Ebates, right? If you're not signed up, let me refer you, send me your email address, and I will send you an email with a link. You click on that link and get it going. I enjoyed it viewing with my mother, and she liked it. All right now, all right now, James, and hi, Mama Hairston. How you doing? Okay, so that is it. That's my time. I will see you. This will be on the replay. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Um, yeah, I'll see you next week. Later. All right, see.